Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket from Rev TV. You'll get every game every Sunday afternoon in crystal clear HD. That's over 220 football games for the entire regular season. Plus, NFL Sunday Ticket gets you up to eight live games on one screen with Game Mix. You'll get that died and woke up in football heaven experience when you include NFL Red Zone, a channel dedicated to every scoring play from every game and all your fantasy football teams. Get in the game with NFL Sunday Ticket. Call 601-8992 today. A body found in a submerged car in the Seabreeze Canal. The DNA says the Bahamar debacle will cost the PLP the next general election. This is the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce anticipates a jump in unemployment. The Caribbean Music Festival has been postponed. And Met Department forecasters still at odds over the radar. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and NB12 Weekend starts right now. Thanks for joining us. Relatives of a man who was reported missing three weeks ago believe he is the person found dead in a submerged vehicle at the Seabreeze Canal this afternoon. Though police say they still need to officially identify the remains, family members of missing 22-year-old Keandre Hanna are convinced the human remains found inside the car are his. Trust me! Love your family. Love your family. Family, my grandson was missing the day, was three weeks a day. Three weeks, 21 days. And I ain't never had a closure. I had one closure, it was yesterday. Nobody said nothing. Nobody came around. PLP, F and M and all. Nobody. According to Chief Superintendent Paul Roll, Defense Force divers discovered the remains inside the car, which according to family members at the scene, belonged to Keandre Hanna. We retrieved a vehicle from the canal uh, that upon examination, we found some what we believe to be human remains on the, on the inside. Despite the many crying relatives on the scene, Roll said police will have to use DNA to determine who the person is. We, at this stage, um, do not have an identification on the individual as yet. And um, we obviously have to proceed by DNA in order to, to uh, make an official identification. And that we'll, we'll uh, meet with the family and, and try and, uh, persons who we will leave are the family, and try and get that out of the way as soon as possible. But Hannah's relatives remain convinced it's him. According to the family, he went missing on October 11th, and ever since that day, they've been searching frantically for him. I put it up. We walk and we walk all of this over there. We put up flyers all about. I went even in the graveyard sniffing like dog. Under the hospital in Minnesota. Been in every ward. That's somebody, child. That's my grandson. And I love him. My grandson don't sleep out. And my grandson don't like to be dirty. He a bed 30 times a day. If he was a place that would used to go for three and four weeks, I said, well, okay, he's someplace. This boy, if he sleep out, he coming home in the morning before 12 o'clock, he can surface. And he can make sure I see him. The family alleges it was them who discovered the submerged car, having seen the vehicle's bumper this past Tuesday. And they say they reported that to police. The family claims that, in their opinion, police did not do enough to assist them in the search for Hannah. I have walked across the canal, water, the sea, and I have done everything I can to find my brother. I have been on the internet more than once getting Mr. Greenslit number and everyone number. We found the bumper and we found the bumper from Tuesday. They and we came back and we meet the bumper the same place. His brother find his bumper. Could you imagine that Bahamas? Superintendent Roll said he's aware of the family's concerns, but right now he's more focused on what could be another murder investigation. What I'm going to ask the family to do is uh, 
this is to cooperate with the police. If this is in fact their loved ones, this is not the time to to be throwing stones. They're free to make their observations. And I'm not going to get into any argument with the family. I have an investigation to conduct, which is a possible murder. And uh, that's my big concern right now. Uh, we want to find out who this person is and how he came by his injuries. With the murder count continuing to creep to record levels, former Free National Movement Senator Dr. Dwayne Sands says it's time to stop playing the blame game. I think we're deceiving ourselves to believe that the problem is not bad. It is a serious, serious problem. This week, a Minister of State for National Security, Keith Bell, dismissed criticism over recent comments he made, insisting the Free National Movement administration failed to bring gang cases before the courts. FNM Chairman Michael Pintard said Bell's comments were unfortunate and called for Bell to be fired. Sand says assigning blame is only a distraction. As opposed to trying to assign blame as was unfortunately done in the uh, upper house by the junior minister for national security. Uh, what we ought to be doing is to acknowledge that this truly requires bipartisan, multipartisan efforts. This truly requires that we change tact, that we modify the approach, that we deal with some root cause approaches to what has been a very vexing and challenging problem to lick. Sands adds that while the focus is placed on how many people are killed, the fact remains that there are hundreds of gunshot victims each year. That, he says, is a true reflection of how serious the problem has become. In other news, Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller has been replaced as the executive chairman of the Bahamas Electricity Corporation. In a letter sent out to staff yesterday afternoon, BEC General Manager Kevin Baisden announced that Cabinet confirmed the appointment of a new board of directors. Nathaniel Vanaby is the new chairman and Donna Smith is deputy chairman. Other board members include Daphne Simmons, Patricia Patricia Hermans, Andrew Rogers, and Deepak Bhatnagar. Baisden said with immediate effect, the board of directors will be responsible for steering the future of BEC, including the eventual transition to Bahamas Power and Light. He said it's another step in moving towards energy sector reform. Just yesterday, the Supreme Court approved a application from the Export-Import Bank of China to send Bahamar into receivership. This move comes after last week's redundancy exercise at the embattled resort. While the ongoing Bahamar debacle will ultimately cost the Progressive Liberal Party at the polls, according to Democratic National Alliance leader Branville McCartney, who said ultimately government is to blame for the layoffs. I blame the government. I absolutely blame the government for the Bahamar debacle. Approximately 2,000 Bahamar employees were laid. Approximately 2,000 Bahamar employees were laid off last week, prompting some, including opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis and Bahamar developer Sarkis Ismerlian, to suggest government is to blame for the layoffs. Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson categorically rejected the assertions in a statement and explained Bahamar's management was planning to implement draconian workforce reductions long before the joint provisional liquidators were compelled to pursue their redundancy program. Nonetheless, McCartney said he believes the current state of Bahamar is, in part, due to the actions taken by the Christie administration. And the, the liquidators are put there for a particular reason. The liquidators did not get there by the developer, or the liquidators did not get there by Chinese construction company. The liquidators are there because of the government. The government, the PLP government, is the government that brought the winding up petition. They're the ones who instituted the winding up petition against Bahama. When you bring a winding up petition, that in essence means to bring the business to an end. And that was the government's doing, the PLP government's doing. So now for the Prime Minister to turn around and say, he doesn't want the liquidators to move forward in a certain direction. Well, they put the liquidators there. And part of the winding up petition, part of bringing the business to an end, is uh, the redu redundancy of persons. 
making people unemployed. McCartney explained he doesn't believe the nation's already rough economy can handle another 2,000 unemployed Bahamians. Well, the economy can't handle a 15% unemployment rate in the first place. That's prior to the 2,000 uh, persons being unemployed. And the 35% unemployment rate for persons between the ages of 18 and 35, that's what it is. So we are, unemployment is, is at a stage where it's unacceptable and certainly it is a very, very serious concern. Given the property's current state, McCartney said he doesn't see it opening until after the next general election, where the next government will have to deal with the issue. And he's confident that government will not be the PLP. He said the Bahamar debacle is just one of many things that will ultimately cost the PLP the next election. It seems as if everything the PLP government has done since 2012 has hurt them from the referendum and going against the, the will of the people from the escalating crime that's going on and we see daily in in our country from the unemployment rate that has now risen by 2000 plus more people from our educational system where they acknowledge and agree that an e and a d is acceptable where we see the BAMSI project that has just been a disaster, a failure. Where we can continue to see uh, ministers of governments um, conflicted. Um, where we see that the, there's been no new uh, industry. Where the economy continues to shrink. Where we see that value-added tax has been put on the backs of Bahamian people. And businesses now are... A losing. The termination of 2,000 workers at Bahamar comes weeks before officials are slated to start compiling data for a new labor force survey. With so many Bahamian workers joining the unemployment line, Chamber of Commerce Chairman Gowan Bo is predicting that will not reflect well on unemployment statistics. Jasmine Brown has more in this report. Bo insists that it will be a daunting task to find work for the thousands of people who are currently unemployed. And as a result, the unemployment statistics will suffer. Having that level of disengagement is certainly going to be negative on the economy. In August, the Department of Statistics reported that the hiring in August, the Department of Statistics reported that the hiring associated with the inaugural Bahamas John Canoe Carnival was a key factor in driving the unemployment rate down from 15.7 percent to 12 percent nationally. According to the last survey, at the time it was taken, 24,980 people were listed as unemployed. Those labor force survey results also show that hiring by the troubled Bahama Resort ahead of what was expected to be a spring opening also contributed to the decline in unemployment. But now the vast... We have to be careful of, of jumping for joy when numbers go down and equally, you know, in terms of sulking when numbers go up. Still, Bo says there is a silver lining as those Bahamar workers are now much more qualified due to the training they received. What we are hoping for is these persons are truly the most employable individuals in the country. And when I say that, the positive side um, in terms of, you know, having to go through so many um, individuals applying, um, effectively drilling that down to a core group that is deemed to be capable of providing the high-level service that the, the establishment wanted to do, went through customer service, orientation uh, with a tourism product. But those should be, right now, the cream of the crop in the sense that they've been through some uh, form of training and they should be able to present themselves in an organized manner in order to take advantage of those things coming on stream. Bo says over the next few months, the chamber plans to host job fairs to assist the unemployed. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown. Caribbean Music Festival attendees were left disappointed last night after the much-anticipated event was postponed. In a statement released yesterday, officials said the remainder of the festival was put off because of insurmountable logistical difficulties. And music fans weren't the only ones left upset by the sudden change of plans. Food vendors who say they spent a precious time and money preparing to sell their wares are outraged, claiming they lost money. 
One vendor said she spent days and a lot of money to prepare food to sell at the event, but because of its postponement, she said she failed to make a profit. I'm so disappointed right now. I hope they ref yes, they're going to refund me back for what I pay, but for all the goods, I won't know if I'm going to get a reimbursement for that too. What did you bring out here to sell? Wings and fries, macaroni and cheese, fish, conch, fritters, burgers, curry chicken, a lot of different stuff. How much did you spend on all of that? I spent over, I can't even think straight right now. But it was a lot of money. Yes, it is. How much money have you made back of that? <laughs> I don't make nothing. Around 9 p.m. at the site of the event last night, the stage was quiet and the lot was empty with only a few wandering stragglers. Another vendor said she lost big time. Very disappointed. Very, very disappointed, man, today. We're very disappointed. What we must do with all these things? We start giving away some of ready. We lose big time, big time. How much days? We start from last week buying up the stuff for them get everything together and whatever, yeah, man, we're disappointed, but. However, not everyone was worried. Another vendor said despite the circumstances, she still managed to make some money selling food to passerbys. Everything, everything is not always perfect. Some things happen and so we have to accept what happened and later it's greater. We have disappointment now, that's okay. Did you spend a lot of money to make it out here and did you make any of that money back? Well, put it this way, I spend and I'm making it. Okay, so if you just relax for a while, people is coming. They already already told people that we are still here. They came and they, they are going to be patronizing us, and that's what you see going on here. Other vendors said event organizers spoke to them about possible reimbursement. One man said he's not concerned as organizers have given him certain assurances. And they have spoken to us, so we, we understand. Uh, we're looking forward to what they said to us, and we'll deal with it professionally because, you know, we've been dealing with the vendor business for quite some time now and they give us the assurance so we'll deal with that cause spare life on probably Tuesday. And they are still comfortable Yeah, we are comfortable. In the statement, festival organizers assured the public that full restitution will be made on ticket purchases and vendors will be refunded fees paid and all contractual obligations will be met. They added that as soon as discussions are concluded with all strategic and interested partners, another date for the resumption of the festival will be announced. When MB12 returns, the former Deputy Prime Minister weighs in on Bahamar. He says everyone is to blame. Stay with us.